Now the story of a Johnstown man who's finally coming home nearly a century later. His extended family never knew what happened to him, but they are now slowly putting together the pieces of his life. His name is Thomas Epsy Gerritsen. His story is so tragic from the beginning, just the fact that he was so young when he lost his parents. Um, he grew up an orphan, but there were seven brothers and they were very close. An orphan at the age of four in Bedford County, Thomas earned his diploma from a military orphan school 12 years later and then settled down in Johnstown. That was in the early 1900s. And that was about all future generations ever really knew about him. At one point, they thought he moved out west, maybe Oregon or Washington, but then that was it. They didn't know any more of what happened to him. Until now. A couple months ago, Becky Perigo of Boswell opened an email that, at first glance, read like a scam. A woman by the name of Phyllis Zagers contacting her through Ancestry.com about a long-lost relative. Essentially, it was um, that she does research in her spare time and that she had information on Thomas S. B. Gerritsen, that he had cremains. He was a, a patient at the Oregon State Hospital, a psychiatric facility, um, and that his cremains were there. Um, he died in 1941, and no one ever picked anything up for him. Thomas Cremains, Oregon State Hospital? Becky started Googling and could not believe what instantly popped up. It appeared her great-great-uncle was part of a bigger story that shook the state of Oregon to its core. I couldn't believe that we were a part of this. A part of the state hospital in Salem, Oregon, the same psychiatric facility where the Academy Award winning movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was filmed in 1975. Do you think there's anything wrong with your mind, really? Not a thing, Doc. In 2004, a state senator, health officials, and local media took a tour of Oregon State Hospital to uncover the deplorable conditions of the psychiatric facility. And that's when the group came across a building full of thousands of corroded copper urns, most of them unclaimed ashes of former psychiatric patients who died in the early 1900s through the early 1970s. People with no next of kin, men and women whose families couldn't afford or chose not to bring them home. It's a lot of names, but I have a feeling if we could get their names out, we might have some individuals who would say, you know, that's my relative. The discovery of the unthinkable living conditions, along with the thousands of unclaimed cremains, led to monumental change in Oregon. New legislation and billions of dollars spent revolutionizing mental health care in Oregon. Families reunited and a memorial built, which now serves as a final resting place for those who remain left behind. I think he spent the last years of his life very alone and yeah, forgotten by his family and, and definitely forgotten after his death. Phyllis Zagers quickly helped Becky fill in the gaps. A 1909 Johnstown directory listed Thomas as a tinner. Cambria County documents reveal he got married in 1913. A draft registration in 1918 indicates he worked as a fire builder for Goodrich Rubber Company in Akron, Ohio. Then 1930 and 40 census records list him as divorced and a patient in Oregon's mental institution. He died there in October 1941. I can't imagine. You know, he was probably alone for, what, 16 years that he was institutionalized. No family. To bring him home, Becky must provide Oregon's health department with enough proof that Thomas Epsy Gerritsen is indeed part of her family line. Each copper canister, including Thomas's, was assigned a corresponding number, each carefully recorded, handwritten, in a ledger. When Becky claims his ashes, she will not only learn his canister number, but also his diagnosis. I want to see the medical records so bad. I, I want to know why he was there. I definitely want to see the memorial. I would love to see it with his copper urn there. She'd also one day like to meet Phyllis Zagers, who essentially solved her family's genealogical mystery. You know, family has been very important for us. So um, 
you know, I, I don't think they forgot him on purpose, <laughs> but somehow he got forgotten. Um, and I just, I want to make it right. He needs to come home. The earliest Thomas will come home is this spring. Meantime, I reached out to Phyllis Zager's Oregon State Archives and State Hospital to uncover more of Thomas's past. Becky and I packed our bags and headed to Salem, Oregon, and you can join us on our journey Thursday on 6 News at 6.